The road to Talladega is a long one along I-40 in Alabama. But in those hills, magic can be found and captured. But is there any magic left for the drivers of the Simulated Stock Car Association? Some need to find it tonight as we roll up on the final race in round one of these playoffs and we'll do it live now. Hello and welcome to the Global Sim Racing Channel's presentation of the Ad Pro 360 Cup Series Playoffs. Tonight from Talladega Super Speedway. Up in the press box to bring you all the action. Yours truly, Sean Ambrose. My partner this evening, Tanner Sharp. We've got Nick Schmeg going to be down there on pit lane for us. Check it in. And a little bit of help from Stefan Schlocker this evening. Kind of watch it over from the blimp. Uh, giving us some news and notes as the race goes on. In the director's chair over there, Joe Peak twisted and tweaking the dials for us this evening. Armed with cameras located, aimed, zoomed, and focused by GSRC's camera guru, Dougie Beard. Let's get ready over these next few minutes as GSRC will bring you all the storylines and all the stats and facts you need to fully appreciate the simulated NASCAR Cup racing that is coming your way. First, though, listen, Bromonte Landscape and Design bring you the Bromonte 250 tonight from Talladega. From idyllic outdoor living spaces with terrace gardens to tranquil waterfalls and magical children's play areas to gated stone entryways and magnificent pool houses. Bromonte Landscape Design and Management Group delivers dreamlike accents, amenities, and landscape designs to Long Island's most prestigious homes and estates. And trust me, there's plenty of those on Long Island. With the meticulous attention to detail and premium quality craftsmanship, the Bromonte team transforms properties into breathtaking home landscapes as unique as the families who live there. Check them out at their website, bromonte.com, B-R-O-M-A-N-T-E.com. Tanner, the high banks of Talladega strike fear in immortal men. Why? And what can you tell us about this track? Well, what could I say about this track that really nobody has said? I mean, Talladega, it's big, it's fast. It was built in 1969, 10 years later than its sister track, Daytona. Like I said, bigger, it's much wider, and it's much faster. It's 2.66 miles. 33 degrees of banking it's two degrees bigger than what its sister track daytona is and i tell you what it is breathtaking here because when the cars get on the track and they're in one big pack you're surrounded by cars and that big pack is a ticking time bomb because you don't know if you're going to get involved in the big one well i tell you what uh high probability that we might see a big one tonight we've got a big field speaking of big one like right now so we've got 29 drivers registered here for this race tonight. You know what, though? Let's go right to the standings because this is the third race in the first round. And, well, there's a lot at stake tonight. And uh, the best way to get in if you're on the outside looking into this race this evening is to win. That automatically gets you into the second round. If we look at the points, it's going to be Gary Sexton right now on the outside looking in. And Gary... Gary needs to win. Uh, now, he may be able to point his way in if he wins the stages tonight and Alan Elwood maybe has an off evening. I'll tell you what, Gary could be the man uh, to watch here this evening. But uh, those standings right now show Andrew Farnyars at the top. And uh, let's see, we got Farnyars at the top right now. He's good. He's won and he's in. And so is Kyle Cameron by way of that win at the Roval in Charlotte. Cameron gets himself in good on points. Also, Brian Hill, Dylan Jones, David Washington is, is it has those playoff points in his pocket. But Elwood is the driver in trouble down there on the bottom. Maybe even Richard Regan or William Moore if they can't come through this evening. Sexton right there, ready to attack. Unfortunately for William Locklear, Andrew Payne, and Eric Stanford, it looks like they may be a little too far back to pick anything up. But let's face it, Tanner, it's Talladega and... Uh, yeah, it may be uh, the third race in the first round, but uh, you know what? Talladega, you want to win. Why don't you talk about the details of the race? Yeah, absolutely. The details of the race here tonight, we are using the Gen 6 Monster Energy Cup cars, the Chevy, Ford, and Toyota, including the ZL1 Camaro. This is the second race in the playoffs out of seven. Fixed setups, 80% fuel loads, and everybody is allowed sets of tires. Today should be a little easy on drivers because it's Talladega, and usually if you could take two tires, you'll be okay. And two cause incidents gets you disqualified. 
And yes, folks, if we have a caution flag towards the end of the race, it does not strictly end the race at all. We have a green-white checkered for this series. iRacing didn't implement it. The league implement, it, imp, implemented it. So if the race finishes under yellow, the top 10 drivers will have one attempt for a green-white checkered finish going green after pace car turns from the victory lap. All right, now, Tanner, tonight they're going to go with a one-lap solo qualifying run. Every driver is going to get its shot at this based on their uh, practice time. Fastest, uh, slowest drivers will be first, and then the uh, the fastest will uh, they'll do kind of reverse the order. And uh, right now they get started with qualifying. It's a ten minute session. May not take all of that uh, as they'll be ready and have the drivers waiting on pit lane, ready to come out. They'll be calling them out on track. There's Ray Richer on track right now, the number forty four. Out there in his Chevrolet Camaro ZL1. And, well, if you haven't got one yet, you need to pony up to the window and get yourself a little eye racing content. Uh, this is a bad, fast race car and uh, model right after the SS. Uh, they didn't change much, but uh, you'll see all, uh, all men, uh, well, both of the Chevrolets on track tonight, the, uh, the SS and the Camaro. A lot of the guys have switched over. Some have stuck with what brought them here. So uh, we'll definitely have that to uh, to look at this evening. Right now, let's talk about the track conditions. It's uh, Tanner. It's kind of warm out there. It is kind of warm out there. And it can also maybe with a hot track temperature like 104 degrees, it, could, it really can play, play a factor with that. Uh, as the tires wear off and you want to move around the racetrack to try to get in the correct line, Sometimes the car could just easily just get loose on corner exit, so you really got to be careful. So the track temperature shouldn't be played too much in the factor tonight because it is Talladega. You're practically just going flat out and lifting at times, but handling can come into play. Yeah, I'm going to bring Nick in real quick, who's going to be down there on pit lane monitoring the uh, the pit stops this evening. Nick, uh, do you think tires will be much of a factor? Do you think anybody will just try to go for two? And replace just those right sides and maybe try and save a couple of seconds. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, tires uh, on a plate track like Talladega or Daytona, it's, it's not one of those tracks you really think of uh, where tires are uh, definitely as important as a track, uh, like a one and a half mile track. But, uh, you know, track position in the same way can easily be made up at Talladega. It can also easily be lost. So, uh, you know, we're going to see all sorts of different strategies tonight. People taking two tires, people... Uh, up and down the field very quickly tonight. And, you know, Tanner, I, I was talking to a couple of drivers earlier today, uh, and, and certainly it's always been one of my theories that up front is really where you want to be. You don't want to get stuck in the middle of this pack. I really don't want to be anywhere in this pack, uh, whether it's up front or in the back of the pack. But, yeah, it's realistically you want to be out front. You want to have that clean air. You want to control the field out towards the front, right on that bottom line. You'll get some guys to follow you. Uh, when you're the race leader, you're practically playing the pod piper in these restricted plate races. If you're in that middle of the pack, your heart is just pounded because you don't know if someone's going to get a bump trap wrong incorrectly, send to the outside wall, sling, and then once they hit the wall, they slingshot back down, and a big accident happens. There's a lot of unknowns going into this race, especially with this new build, because I'm not sure how these cards really draft here. I know that iRacing kind of tamper with the draft package just a little bit, but uh, a lot, again, a lot of unknowns here at Talladega. So if you want to be up front, that's great. You know, it, you might save, uh, you might be out of trouble there. Just be careful of that little push you get from behind because it has <laughs> happened. Yeah, yeah. Now th these cars do line up pretty well on the straightaways, but. Uh, Ooh, pushing, uh, pushing through the high banks of uh, Talladega, generally not the best thing to do, and certainly not, uh, um, certainly not uh, preferred by most drivers anyway. Now, listen, uh, they're going to be teammates out on track this evening as we watch Kyle Cameron, last week's winner, get around the track. Uh, it, it's something you work on together. You can push all the way through the turns. I've done it with with guys before, and. Uh, done it with great success. You can definitely get faster and get every drop of uh, speed out of uh, these cars if uh, if you can handle that. One of the things we were talking about in the pre-race is the side draft. And uh, you know what, Nick? I'll go back to you on that. Uh, side drafting certainly a way to be faster, but boy, you better be working close to somebody that you really trust, huh? Yeah, and uh, you know, a lot of times I wouldn't even feel comfortable out there working with someone I do trust uh, when it comes to side drafting. This track, you never know 
going in and out of turns, what you're going to be faced with, uh, what lane you're going to end up uh, coming out of the turn uh, in. I don't, you know, you have teammates, but at the same time, you really don't at Talladega. Yeah, to top off what Nick is saying there, Sean, is realistically back when maybe about seven years ago, six years ago on iRacing, you had the two-car tandem. You needed a dancing partner. Today, yeah, you still need a dancing partner, but that bump and draft, that two-car tandem, really doesn't work too well anymore like it used to, so that kind of puts you in a position to where you have to control your own destiny. Okay, and uh, now... Uh, a good question just came up uh, wanting to know whether or not now they are using a fixed set. Is this the iRacing fixed set or is it a custom fixed set? This is the iRacing fixed setup uh, that, that that they're using here this evening, or I should say the uh, the default setup for Talladega. So um, certainly something to, to pay attention to. It, it certainly levels the playing field, Tanner. Uh, you know, when you're talking about advantages, nobody really has any distinct advantage other than your experience on this track and knowing how to uh, to drive it, honestly, uh, Tanner, and, and you may agree or disagree with me, but uh, I found one of the things here at Talladega and on any super speedway really is avoiding scuffing off any speed at all, holding that wheel just as straight and as true as possible down the straightaways and trying not to scuff any off in the turns, having a very decisive line through uh, these 33 degree, 30 degree, 33 degree bank turns. Easy for me to say. Yeah, absolutely. You know, from my past experience here on iRacing is I prefer not to side draft. And there's a reason why for it, because there's a high risk chance that you might catch that little net code and it just turns somebody and cause a big disaster. The net code is a big fear on the iRacing simulator, which eventually, you know, will, will be worked on. But that is just my biggest fear. So I just want to hold that wheel as straight as possible and then have somebody push me down that back straight away. Because if I can straighten out the wheels... Uh, just enough to get that run down that back straightaway, man, you're going to carry legs down that straightaway, man. I, I promise you that. So kind of give your opponents uh, as plenty of room as possible and just keep that wheel straight as much as you can. If you tend to side draft too much, the guy behind you is just trying to like, I'm just trying to follow your line, man. Well, a, we look into qualifying here. Andrew Farnyard sits up on the top, but not entirely shocked by that. He is certainly fast on the super speedways. believe he won. Uh, at Daytona here uh, at the beginning of the season. Um, 22 drivers have qualified. Dylan Jones coming around now. I believe he's got his time in. And, you know, there's there's Eisenhower, Adam on screen. He does not have a time in the books yet here. So we've still got a few drivers who have an opportunity to get to the pole and knock Andrew Farnyars off his throne there. Justin Bolton. With a very fast time, Bolton's here this evening, uh, a 51.776. That's still 200 slower than uh, Andrew Farnier. So definitely uh, a little bit of a trick to finding that magic qualifying line, isn't there? Yeah, definitely. It just goes to show because t when you qualify Talladega, it's practically the car. How much speed does that specific car have? And Andrew Farnier just shows he, he's he got the speed wherever he goes. Uh, when you're qualifying... it there's really not really any handling to it you're just flat out and picking up that magic line to go usually on the first lap it's a high line around but i assume with a 51 uh they're practically either middle to bottom groove because the bottom side of the racetrack when you're qualifying is the fastest way around the track boy and adam eisenhower we're just watching on screen he gets all the way up into the top 10 and eight there and that is a mighty fine run for him and uh, let's see. I'm thinking that's everybody. I don't think anybody else is going to head out of here with only a minute and a half left. Let's go ahead and give that Sim Speed Shop Pole Award to Andrew Farnyars. And that, trust me, folks, that is not his only one this season as he has picked up several along the way. But uh, he uh, gets back into the pool here uh, to get that Sim Speed Shop uh uh, poll award it is for every two polls the driver earns five dollars and the driver with the most polls at the end of the season is going to get twenty dollars courtesy of simspeedshop.com a great place to order custom button boxes as well as buy and sell used equipment for more information go to simspeedshop.com all one word simspeedshop.com so here we go qualifying is wrapped up and uh, really, we, we talked about the weather. It's it's a little bit of a warm track. There's n the wind is not gusting too bad. Uh, really, I think the key, Tanner, is is everyone getting off to a good start, don't you think? 
Yeah, it's just that one word, patience. Yeah. <laughs> try telling a driver, if you're spot for a driver, to try telling him patience. Probably not going to happen. But here at Taldega, it's 96 laps today. You've got to have per- patience at least. So you know you're going to have cautions in the stages here later on. So don't pressure yourself if you're in the back of the pack. Uh, anything can happen in this race in the first 96 laps. So just take it easy out there and just make the correct moves when, when, ha- when it counts. Well, some of my uh, children of the 80s will remember when I say we need a little patience. So anyway, that's uh, that's my bad joke for the evening. Let's go to the grid now and run this down for you here. We're going to get one long lap around Talladega Super Speedway. We'll go through the grid here. We'll take a 10 at a time. Andrew Farnyars on the pole with Justin Bolton on his outside. And then we'll go down to uh, the second row. It's going to be, uh, or I'm sorry, what? Is that right? Am I seeing that right? Yes, I am seeing that right. Andrew Payne and Will Davis will start on the second row. Go to row three. Richard Regan Jr. is starting on the inside in fifth. Mark Cleewell will start sick tonight. Row four. Danny Rogers in a number 22. He's going to sit there alongside Adam Eisenhower with that great qualifying run there late. Row five. Kyle Cameron, last week's winner, is starting ninth tonight. Ray Richard in the number 44 is going to start 10th. Tanner? Gary Sexton's going to start in the 11th position tonight. Mark McFadden's going to start in 12th. Gerald Campbell in 13th. Jay Queen, 14th. Alan Elwood will start in 15th. Start middle of the pack. Daniel Jackson in 16th. Jeremy Crandell in 17th. David Washington, one of the fast guys in this series, is going to start mid-pack. He'll start 18th tonight. Judd Danielson, 19th. And rounding out the top 20, Colton Selleck. All right, and now back to row 11. Eric Stanford is going to start 21st in a number 19. And I, Dylan Jones, starting 22nd in a number 16. Row 12, Ethan Moore and Tanner Tallarico there in 24th. That's a new face for us this evening. Daniel Eberhardt starting 25th. Ryan Hill, 26th for him in the the, uh, double nickel there. Row 14, Josh Bonwell and William Locklear on the outside there in 28th and 29. Kevin Fetty going to start on the inside of row 15 all by him lonesome. Here we go as we get the cars now pacing around. Just getting cranked up here through turns one and two. 65 miles an hour. That is the slowest speed we'll see all day at Talladega Motor Speedway until the next caution flag comes out. I'm going to call it Motor Speedway. Tanner, don't make that mistake. They get upset down here in Talladega if you call it a motor speedway. This is a super speedway. This is the super speedway. Uh, they even call the back stretch. Uh, it's not the back stretch. It's the super stretch. The Alabama gang super stretch. <laughs> I, I'm so fortunate to have seen uh, a bunch of races here. I, I've, I've been a few times in Boy, it just never gets old. Uh, it, it's so much more fun to be a spectator here in Talladega uh, and, and be at the track than it is to try and watch it within the confines of a small television set. But this evening, we're bringing it to you here live uh, via the wonder of the Internet, streaming here on YouTube for you, the Simulated Stock Car Association Ad Pro 360 Cup Series for the Bromonte 250 here, hitting the high banks here in three and four. We're getting ready to let him rip, and Andrew Farnyars is going to start on the inside. Let's look at the race analysis here for a moment. Today, 96 laps, 20 for the first segment, 25 for the second, and then 51 for stage three. And it's probably going to be about a 28 to 32 lap fuel window. Here goes the Ford Mustang pace car, ready to peel off to the left, down the pit lane. Andrew Farnyars will... Keep them going here and wait for that green flag. As we all wait, here it comes. It is the calm before the storm. Long way to that start finish line. It's all the way through the tri oval on the other side. We're mean green and underway here in the Bro Monte 250. Talladega Motor Speed Super Speedway. Andrew Farnyars with a great start, but Justin Bolton with an even better one. Keeps it running there on the high side. He did not fall asleep on that start at all. But Farnyard is using the advantage of that low lane here early to get a good start and bring the 93 of Andrew Payne right along with him here, Tanner. 
Yeah, Andrew Payne out front. He's being the pod piper at the start of this race. Lean that bottom groove. They're side by side practically for the third spot right now. The number seven of Justin Bolton just trying to hang on. He's got some buddies behind him. Let's see if he can challenge for the top spot. We already seen a driver goes towards the inside right there. That's not going to help Bolton because right now that outside line has really disappeared yep. immediately right off the bat as they come they off. They hung the him out to dry. Yep, as they come off 33 degrees of banking, here comes Andrew Farnyars in the trioval. That's what's so unique about Talladega is that the start finish shine is not right here. It's towards the exit of Pit Road as Farnyards leads the first lap. That's a good run by Farnyards there to keep it up front. And the seven, Justin Bolt, still struggling. He does not find a way to get down in line. He's stuck up there on the high side. Nobody coming with him. And this is starting to split up into a couple of packs. A little bit of a gap there, and I don't know. We can keep this a one-pack race if they can get moving. I think it's Gary Sexton that's leading that charge right now back there in his Toyota. In fact, it is the number 17, or I'm sorry, that's Judd Danielson. And up top, oh, boy, he's really continuing to fall. Bolton finally finds a, a ride in and gets right up in front of Danielson. Danielson gives him a little bit of a shot to the bumper as they come now down to the trial loop back to the start finish line danielson picking up six spots early and this is all one big line again tanner yep it is andrew farner being the pot piper right now around talladega as justin bolton actually he dropped six spots right off the bat he's outside the top 10 already in the first two laps so bolton just organized himself back in line remember you got that first stage that's going to come up i think you said it was lap 20 there sean so with that being said it's practically a shootout right here just try you know take it easy for a little bit you know just be in position when it counts and right now there isn't really a fight up towards the front it's just andrew farnyard's leading the train here the the 98 is having a little oh, bit of man of the pack the number five i believe up there towards the front just a little bit or is that the number six some some blue car just popped out of line almost got turned that could have been gerald campbell that was uh that that was gerald campbell in the neonism uh number six there he's camaro and when he gets back in the line everything looks to be back in order now yeah, you don't want, like, like, you see what Gerald Campbell's doing? He's kind of leaving a little leeway on the bottom there with a car on his left rear core panel. You don't want that to happen at all. So you have to secure that spot and just ride in line. Unless he's, like, overheating in the middle of that pack because temperatures can go up when you're in the middle of the pack like that. Tanner, uh, right now it's it's Tanner Tallarico trying to hang on to this pack in front of him. He's there in 14. He's still got the very, very tail end of this draft. He can just keep it smooth and get back to him. He's got to run, but they have dropped this second pack led by David Washington. That is the 98. That's the car we said might be having a little trouble keeping up. Well, everybody behind him having trouble too. Ray Richard, Dylan Jones, Ellery Queen, Eric Stanford, Colton Salak, all in that group. Daniel Jackson hopped out of line, but he has no partner, so he looks like he's going to fall back. He just completely lost his spot. There he has help as the number seven, but I don't think it's enough right now to challenge that big old pack up towards the front there. So uh, they're, they're trying to make that outside lighting work. They're trying to get hey. a group of guys going. Yeah, yeah. Well, guess who's coming back in this thing? Uh, there is the number seven stuck in the middle. Bolton's got a couple of dance partners now. Judd Danielson right behind him. Here comes the 84, Daniel Jackson. They are getting a good run up there. Here we go. The top line is starting to move, Tanner. They need Danielson's help, though. He needs to get up there. Yeah, he's trying to do, they're trying to get up there. They're doing a really good job. I mean, I'm kind of surprised that these guys are by themselves realistically because there's a driver back there. I think that's a number 17, Judd Danielson. Yeah. He's not on that back bumper of the number seven at all, Justin Bowen. So practically Bowen and the 84 of Jackson doing this all by themselves and going to the front. Trying to do a little side drafting too. They're keeping that pack really, really tight. Oh, what almost contact there. Oh, and he's in there. He left his partner. Oh, no loyalty there from Justin Bolton. He leaves Daniel Jackson out to dry. Guess what? Now Jackson's going to get a little help from Will Davis. Will Davis decides to go up with him. Will Davis There's says, Gary hey, Sexton man, back out. there. Sexton's back there making a run. He's got Daniel Danielson pushing on him. 
Oh, Daniel Jackson, he's getting helpers now because he's got about four guys right behind him trying to lead that train. So if that yep. number seven of Bolton and Jackson could get up there just to two cars, just imagine what a five-car outside line train could do. Oh, they're going to throw him into the middle. Uh -oh. The sucker hole. Clowns to the left of me, jokers to my right. Here I am. I'm in the middle, but I'm kind of going Man. backwards. Jackson just can't catch a break right now. Oh, look at this. They're going to run around Bolton, too. Uh, Bolton drops oh, back down in front of Jackson. He got lucky. Oh, man. Yes, he he did. I can't imagine Jackson's too happy about that right now. Oh, man. I bet J Jackson, if this was a, a real race instead of a virtual race, man, I tell you what, he'd be shaking that fist out the window. He's probably still shaking that fist. He's probably told him he's number one. Why again? We go. Now, this is Harry. We're going three by three now that Jackson has no choice but to go to that middle lane because that, I believe, the 13 car down on the inside is actually going to get it. Oh, and look who steps out of line up or front seven. there. That's uh, Danny Rogers gets in the mix. He throws himself in the middle of this thing. Maybe he wants to try and get to the front first. He's got Bolton pushing on him. Backs off a little bit here in the middle of the turn. But Rogers still really get a good run there on the outside. That car is continuing to gain momentum as he goes around Richard Vigan. And now they're three wide again. Bolton searching for an oh. empty spot on the track. Oh, Andrew Payne thought about stepping out up front. Oh, man. We are going three wide for a number of laps here at Talladega. And the scary thing is is that these cars are really jumping around as probably you see on screen. You're probably thinking, hey, can't these guys hold a line? No, that's the air moving around the cars when you're going almost 200 miles an hour. Daniel Jackson and Will Davis just had a little contact going through the middle of the turn. They were door to door. But it's still Jackson and Bolton holding down the middle. Danny Rogers still up there kind of trying to find a team. I think he's trying to decide where he wants to go. He splits the middle. It's going to be four wide. We are four wide here at Talladega Super Speedway. Oh, man, if you're a race fan, you're going, uh-huh. If you're a driver, you're going, uh-uh. Because uh, you're, you're at four wide at Talladega, beating and banging, and they made it unscathed. Tell you what, if this was Daytona, it would be a different story, Sean. All right, we're back at Oh, almost oh. caught. That was yep, the number Danny 11. Rogers and Will Davis almost got together there. Yeah, I would tell you what, uh, that was lucky for Davis. He could have gotten to the outside wall, but I tell you, what that really did is really backed up that high outside line. All right, things have calmed down maybe just a little bit. It, Daniel Jackson, we've been talking about following Bolton. Hey, we got to try to get a close-up on the car. Uh, he's in the NDL uh, Camry this evening. Um, he's, in, he's in the Carolinas, and... Uh, well, as far as Daniel's concerned, uh, be damn the hurricane. Uh, as he says on the quarter panel back there, what hurricane? He's got a, uh, a satellite image that's pointing on the rear quarter panel of the car. As our thoughts uh, are definitely with all those in the Carolinas right now. But uh, Daniel here to race and here to win. Absolutely. That's a, that's actually a lot of faith right there to, to, to sim race when a, a hurricane is coming. But nonetheless, that number 46, Richard Regan Jr. pops out of line, getting help from Justin Bolton. And um, looks like he's going to challenge for some more. And as the 84 is a little bit left right, Lucy Goosey, that's Daniel Jackson. I, I'm going to be honest with you, Bolton didn't, I, I don't know, he almost helped him get around. That was really, really close. But Regan now opened up a little space. He sidetracked just enough here to stay with these two up front. But it's been all Andrew Farnyars. Since the uh, the green flag dropped 12 laps ago, he's continued to just bring pain along with him. Nothing has really happened on the top side yet. It's been slow moving. But here comes Regan all of a sudden with a run. As they're going to pass the car up against the wall, uh, let's see who are they lapping there. That's the uh, the that's Big Fagin. So trouble with him. Look at this going to the top side, Daniel Jackson. And, oh, that uh, was a mistake. Oh boy, I think it was. I think he bobbled. He's going to have to try and slip back in line here. Close yeah, it he in there, Daniel. Close it in. Yeah, he gets been behind the uh, 42 there of Alan Elwood. I don't look like he had a little bit of an issue earlier, like a, at least a lap earlier, but it looks like he's okay right now. Tell you what, challenge up towards the front with a big run, and returns number one, Richard Reagan Jr. Challenging Andrew Farnyards. He has some help from the number seven of Justin Bolton and that number 13 car of Gary Sexton. 
Now, Nick, there was there was some uh, there was some activity in the pit lane that we missed. Yeah, we had a car come down. I believe I was. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll be honest. My eyes were glued to the track. It's just uh, you know, how can you take your eyes off an aggressive three wide racing like this? <laughs> Nick, Nick didn't want to admit he was actually eating ice cream uh, when that happened, but that's all right. That's all right. It's okay for race car drivers or even commentators to eat ice cream. The battle up front is intense, though. Regan has definitely uh, brought it up alongside Andrew Farnyars and uh, Bolton, giving him a really, really good push back there. Gary Sexton has gotten himself right up towards the front. That's where he wants to be this evening. And, uh, yeah, it's looking pretty good there on the outside. That line is definitely starting to move, Tanner. Got to get something going. Got to experiment with the draft just a little bit, and that's what these guys are doing because you got a big pack of cars on the high side. You had the majority of the train on that inside. Look at Regan Jr. to do use a little side draft just a little bit. Tuck down on that quarter panel. Just be careful just in case there's net code. But, man, he's right on the door panel of the number 93 of Andrew Payne trying to get a little si si side draft, trying to slow that inside row down just a little bit. He's still side-by-side -side for second spot as Andrew Farnyards is the Lone Ranger out front with the pack and, of hungry wolves behind them and the top 20 remain all within about two and a half seconds of each other it's about nine seconds back now to willem locklear in the 21st slot he's got ethan moore right behind him adam eisenhower kyle Cameron. those guys have lost the draft and it doesn't look like they're going to catch it uh catch it back up until we get to the uh, the yellow here for the end of the first segment which is coming up we got five laps to go Barnyard is leading him through the turn here up front. They're skating around a little bit. And might be some cars starting to try and find a little bit of air here, Tanner. I see several stepping out here, trying to get the nose open and get some air in that radiator. New in leader. Those ducks. Richard Regan Jr. got by Farnyards. He's going to tuck it to the inside. And now here comes Justin Bolton. Regan was the last lap leader last time by. Now let's see what Bolton can do. These drivers are kind of fighting so hard for that top spot before the end of the stage. Four stage points. Now I'm Here talking. comes. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I'm talking about air ducks, and there's a pass for the lead for the first time tonight. Now Bolton, he's ahead. Will he drop down, or is he going to bring Sexton with him? No, he's going to leave Sexton up top. He's going to come down in front and take the race lead. Coming out of turn four. Justin Bolton, for the first time tonight, is going to bring it down to the stripe. Oh, that With hurt Gary three laps Sexton. to go. That hurt Sexton. Sexton's drafting partner actually dropped down towards the inside. Sexton's going to drop back. Bolton's going to be the race leader. Bolton is not a playoff contending driver. He's racing for honor and for the trophies. Boy, and I know Sexton had this segment uh, as a target to try and win. Uh, it's going to be tough for back there now. He's starting to get some help, though. Here comes Danny Rogers. Here comes Will Davis, but they better get on their horse here. We're running out of laps. Up front, we are lying astern. Sexton drops in behind Cleewell. That left Rogers out high and dry. Everybody now Ooh. back single file racing, kind of like how we were in the opening laps of this race. Justin Bolton leading around. There's going to be three to go this time by before the end of stage number one. Gary Sexton hop, oh, not, excuse me, not Sexton, but Farnyards hopped out of line, <laughs> hops back in line, trying to get some players to go with him. Not going to happen this time around. Well, uh, it, it's all about, uh, if you're one of these playoff contending drivers, it's all about picking up the points right now. And, uh, well, here we go. Two laps to get it done. How about Alan Elwood sits back there in fourth? You know, he started back in, what was it, 15th place. Elwood, the biggest mover up here in the front. And Elwood's going to step out with a run. Here, we here go. comes Andrew Payne right at his back door. Both of these drivers racing for points. Bolton moves Look up at the that. Track right in front of him. Oh, that might. Oh, and uh. let's see what the guys behind are going to do. They're going to throw him in the middle. Uh, it's a mixed bag right now, so this actually might help Bolton just a little bit, but Ooh, it's not going to get him the lead. Watch this, watch this pack in the middle, though. Sexton is strong. He's bringing Campbell with him. We've got four in the middle, two up top, four on the inside. Three wide as they head down the super stretch into turn three. 
Austin Bolton still trying to go for that race lead. He's got help. He's got the 13 of Sexton. He's got the 6 of Gerald Campbell. Number 93, Andrew Payne, might abandon number 42 of Elwood here. Elwood's actually falling back. There goes Andrew Payne in the number 93. He's going to tuck down, go through the middle here, and leave Elwood out the dry. White flag lap right now for stage number one. Again, remember, Gary Sexton is that driver on the outside looking in, needs a win. More importantly, he could do even better with bonus points by winning the stage. Getting max points here would be premium. He's going to have to follow Justin Bolton and do it. Oh, man, it's going to be huge for Regan Jr. if he can win this stage right now. He did everything he can to get up towards the front and try to take that lead and win this stage. But he's being challenged by a spoiler, Justin Bolton. He's doing everything he can to win this stage so far. Tell you what, Richard Regan's looking pretty good because I don't think that number seven, he just Jackson lost. Moves down. Oh, oh, he's going to move down. Almost oh, contact. Geez. Coming to the line. It's going to be Richard Regan Jr. winning the stage. Nice. Sexton is actually going to get third there. That's not a. That's not terrible. Those are good bonus points for the stage. But Richard Regan Jr. clearly uh, there across the line. He does it uh, all by himself. Another just one think. of those neonism Camaros. And just think, there, Sean. He is sitting seventh on the playoff grid, six points ahead of the cutoff line. That was huge for him. Big points, man. That's uh, that's what you got to do. Win these stages, pick up those bonus points, and well, maybe even cross your fingers a little bit to make it into round two. But uh, boy, what a what a great! St Remember what I what I said was critical here just before we got started about getting a good start. That doesn't get much better than that for these guys. They do it without a caution for damage. Uh, everybody behave themselves well. Here in the first stage, Tanner, uh, Nick, we're getting ready to send him to you. Four fresh good years and a full tank of Sunoco fuel. Is that the call? You know, I, I've, I've got to imagine that's going to be the call for, for most everyone. You might have some guys at the back that uh, want to gain some track position, might take two tires early on. But uh, in my opinion, if I'm out there uh, behind the wheel of a car, I'm, I'm taking four tires and a full tank of gas. Cars coming down pit road right now. Uh, I'm sure these guys uh, just got done with 20 laps of pack racing. They're a little relieved, but, you know, might get a little hairy on pit road when you have this many cars down here. Yeah, the whole field, uh, basically, on pit road. Everybody pulling into their boxes, not seeing everybody have any real problems yet. Looks like most of the drivers hitting their marks. Oh, boy. We got two tires. Uh, I think we got a two-tire changer back there, yeah. Yeah, Best I believe. Field, maybe. I believe Regan just barely edged out Farnyards for the win off or the, the race off pit road. Yeah, that was 20 laps. Uh, that was a 20 lap stint here, folks. And, and really, uh, I, I, that was a little bit of a shootout. I would say two tires would be a good correct call to try to, try to keep your track position. Uh, if your car's handling fine, I mean, sometimes go with no tires. But in this case, at least they took two. With that, we are going to send it to break here real quickly. We're going to take a, a, just a moment away here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. We'll be back with the Vermont D250 from Talladega Super Speedway in just a moment.
the Global Sim Racing Channel is back on the air and we're live here at Talladega Super Speedway tonight for the Bromonte 250 Bromonte Landscape and Designs. Check them out at Bromonte.com. B R O M A N T E.com is where you can find them. The lights are finally out on the pace car as we slowly pace around this track at 65, mile, 65 miles an hour. Almost doesn't seem fair. I'm rather surprised the cars don't fall off the banking at that speed. Yeah, but I mean, you know, it gives time drivers a little to relax just a little bit. Uh, I know I relax a little bit and text and drive to under caution flag here at Talladega. So you can entertain yourself when it's under caution, but we got the one to go signal and it's going to pick the intensity is just going to pick right back up. Well, I took a power nap during the break and I'm ready to go here for this uh, second uh, stage which is not going to be the full 25 laps that uh, we were promised. In fact, uh, this is only, or I'm sorry, well, will it be the, we're going to lap 51. We're going to restart at the beginning of lap 26. So it looks like we'll, uh, I'm trying to do math. Tanner, I'm going to uh, shut up now. Here we go. <laughs> uh, we had All a conversation right. about this, but. Yes. Uh, Richard Regan leads him around. He's going to start on the inside of Andrew Farnyard. He's going to start up top. Farnyard's got an old friend behind him, Mark Clewell. Let's see if Clewell can give him a nice push off the line. Gary Sexton's up in that line also. Wants to keep that car up front, down on the bottom. It's going to be led by Richard Regan Jr. And just behind him, Gerald Campbell in a number six and a 93 of Andrew Payne to get him started as we come around out of turn four. The Ford Mustang pace car is going to take this left-hand turn down the long pit lane. And remember, the start-finish line after the trioval here, unlike Daytona, where you hit it there through the trioval, it's after the trioval. And so we'll pace all the way through here in the trioval. It's going to be up to Richard Regan as we slowly await that green flag. And now Regan goes... He hits the hammer and down to turn one. He's going to bring the number six to Gerald Campbell. Oh, and Clewell's oh, in the wall. No. Sexton gets in the Clewell. Bunch of cars. The wall. Caution is out, and we've had the big one on the restart here in stage two. It's happened before in real life NASCAR. It's happened in the SSCA Cup Series. And I'm telling you, I think Clewell got a push from Sexton. And I think he was just coming up through the gears, and that's what got the car out of whack and just turned him. Yeah, we're going to catch the replay here. And, boy, uh, I think what happened was is I think Clewell, something happened. He either missed a shift, but the, he loses the momentum in the car. Sexton just riding along there. He gets him, and everybody's got a scramble. Several race cars involved in that. We'll go on board with Will Davis here, Tanner. Will Davis, who had a start from the back of the pack under this restart because he went through too many pit stalls. Yeah, looking at the replay a couple times here, Claywell hits the wrong gear. Car stalls out. Look at this melee in front of him. Got to try and get through here. And somebody is winning tonight. That's uh, that's pretty lucky right there as he gets through. Oh, man. He wow. Beat. He'd be hitting his head on on the on a door or something if he would have gotten involved in that accident, Will Davis, because he actually had an EOL penalty uh, for driving through too many pit stalls, so he got pretty lucky there. Nick, who's in? Who's out? Well, right now I'm not seeing anyone. Uh, Davis, I'm seeing coming down. Uh, he was the one, like you just mentioned, got the uh, the end of the line penalty on the last caution. Uh, he drove through too many pit stalls. Uh, on his pit exit, uh, that was a text that, uh, you know, the message that all the drivers see. So a lot of drivers are going to be keeping that in mind now on pit road. Yeah, a bunch of drivers right now are just kind of focused on trying to get reorganized, kind of get caught back up so they don't get a black flag here. Uh, then go down pit road and get a damn repaired. So uh, they should be coming in either this time or next time by there, Nick. Oh, and we've got a, I hear we maybe got a blown engine on track. Uh, Jeremy Crandall with some trouble, the 73. Oh, yeah, and so Crandall with trouble. Now, when Davis came in, he took tires. 
I wonder if that was just a mistake, not getting those tires unchecked before we got down there. I've done that. Yeah, yeah. Now we've got drivers coming in. Uh, Alan Elwood, Ray Richard, Daniel Jackson, Kim Fetty, Judd Danielson, Sexton, Danny Rogers, Cammer, Adam Eisenhower. A lot of takers here, guys. Yeah, a lot of takers indeed there, Nick. Uh, I assume majority of these drivers are coming down to get damaged repaired. But, Nick, do you think this, uh, if they're able to get back out there without losing the lap, which is certainly possible, do you think with the aerodynamic package, can they keep up? I think they might be able to, uh, especially if there's a lot of them with the rather same amount of damage they can keep up together in a pack, at least not to lose a lap. Uh, but, yeah, it looks like most of the guys coming down right now damaged uh, guys that were in the second half tail end of that field coming down. All right, well, it, we've got a small list. Gary Sexton has a lot of damage on his Toyota, unfortunately. Kyle Cameron picked up a little bit of damage. Uh, Rogers has got some as well. In fact, he's still in the pits. Uh, Ray Richard picked up a little bit of damage on his car, the 44. Tallarico has a little bit of damage himself. Um, let's see. Uh, Davis has got some. Uh, Crandall has got some damage also. So does Adam Eisenhower. So there we go. I mean, that's your damage report. Obviously, a lot of race cars caught up in that, but the guys up front were able to get through that uh, without any trouble. And, well, Richard Riggin is going to get a chance to restart this race again here for Stage 2. Now, the lights are still out on the pace car. Uh, the lights are still on on the pace car as we continue to come around the track here. Nick... Uh, Still a few drivers sitting down there. Does it look like they're going to be able to get back out? Uh, Clewell, Eisenhower, Cameron, what do you think? I don't know. I think a lot of these guys are uh, keeping their eye on the clock. I see Danny Rogers just came out of the pits. Uh, I don't know, guys. Paxson, uh, turn four. Turn four, and we think the lights will go out on the pace car this time. We're not absolutely positive here. We'll see what happens. Wonder if anybody will try and peel off and come down pit road this time. I don't see any real reason to if you don't have any damage. There may be some drivers that uh, need to pick up a little bit. But as we go through the damage report, as we talked about all the drivers that were involved, about a third of the field overall, 10 cars pick up uh, damage in that incident. And I, I Tanner it doesn't really... Uh, uh, that, that's about as big as it, it, sh it hopefully will get, don't you think? Um, well, it can get bigger, but again, you have to be really careful. Pace car lights are off right now, so we got the finally the one to go signal this time by. But if you have damage, you know you got to be cautious of that. Uh, it, you know you can get a lot of damage repair under caution here at Talladega. You're not going to go a lap down right away unless you're not paying attention to what pace car is according to your relative screen. Nonetheless, uh, just got to go out there, continue to do your best, gather as much points up you can gather as much points as you can as Richard Regan Jr. is certainly doing that. He has a shot to go for 10 more bonus points if he wins stage number two. Uh, Richard Regan Jr. and Farnyards were saving fuel under this caution flag. Not sure what that all is all about. Maybe trying to figure out how much you can save under the yellow flag. Could be. I'm not 100% sure. But nonetheless, Richard Regan Jr. has elected the outside row uh, for this restart. Not a bad place to be if you can get some good help from behind. And I got to tell you, uh, the 93 has been strong from that position this evening. He seems to to be a good pusher. And, uh, well, you know what? It's a rare instance where you get a driver who can do both very well. Uh, generally on the super speedways, you either push real well or you're able to handle the push real well. And, well, I, I really think Andrew Payne has been a solid, uh, uh, a solid partner back there this evening let's see if he can give richard regan a little bit of help on this restart as we get into turn three here it's going to be regan gerald campbell on that front row andrew farnyards and on the outside will be andrew payne so there's your top four to get it started i'd be a little bit worried about restarting the outside row just like this uh just in case if campbell gets a good run they hog up that inside row We've already seen that first stage, how pretty much dominating that inside row really was. But it does take a special group of cars on that high line to really get something going. Sometimes it just takes two cars, uh, a really good special group of two cars just to get something going. But again, it's Talladega. Anything is possible. So we're coming to the restart here, Sean. And that pace car is off. 
Richard Regan on the outside. He'll start this field. Gerald Campbell got to be careful there on the inside. Richard Regan's on the hammer. Here he goes. We're back underway here in the Bromonti 250 Stage 2. Back underway. We had a little trouble getting it started here. Before already they're going, they're dropping in the line up front. One car left up top there, two cars left up top. It's the 23 of Ethan Moore. He's going to drop down in line. Safety down there. Farnyards looked outside, got back in line. Good He's run. giving the push to Campbell. They don't take it anywhere. They're just going to ride single file. That's one of the crazy things about Talladega is if they get a run like that, they can really zoom by you on the outside and leave you towards the inside with no help. But so far, they're kind of giving Regan Jr. a little bit of a... Give him a little bit of a leeway. Just have have his time out towards the front and challenge him towards the end of the end of the stage. Richard Regan Jr. doing everything he can here. Just kind of, I, I mean, realistically, Sean, and I do this a lot too. I'm more mirror driving than I want what's in front of me. <laughs> I'm not even joking about that because you're constantly looking in your rear view mirror, wondering what these guys are doing. Who's going to pop out? Are they going to take advantage of me? Am I going to go backwards? What's going on behind me? Uh, sometimes drivers don't have the option where they have somebody actually talking to them. Some do, some don't. But in my case, I don't. So I'm constantly mirror driving. That's one of the hard things to do at Talladega. I'd say a little over 50% of the time, I'm mirror driving if I'm leading the race. Boy, and Cleewell, Eisenhower have dropped way back. It's a 22nd on back. They've lost it by well over eight seconds now. This front pack starting to really pull away. It's still Richard Regan hanging on to things up front here, Tanner. Gerald Campbell playing well here so far see in the back there we've got a top line starting to move a little bit it's ryan hill getting a little help from the seven justin, yep that's justin Jeez. bolton nothing happening yet right, more with justin bolton right here you see him laying the push there to ryan hill but uh not enough not enough help they're going to need somebody else to drop in there with him. Hill's going to decide to just drop in line at this point. Try not to lose any more positions here. Still kind of looking to the outside there, keeping it just off the uh, the rear bumper. Ooh, looks like uh, the drop, uh, behind Andrew Farnyards, that's Andy Payne. Looked like he wanted to go toward, uh, get to the outside, but he had no drafting help. He tucked back in line. Here they go, and that's what I was just talking about. Who's going to hop towards the outside row? They thought about it. They closed right back in, though. Oh, man, Richard Regan's like, man, oh, man. He, I, I'm telling you, he's mirror driving, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Hill goes back to the top. Bolton goes with him. Oh, and another car comes to the top here. Going to drop in. I oh, know. I guess the 23. Not sure what he wants to do yet. Ethan Moore finally gets in line Farnyars takes a peek maybe Payne's going to come with him I think so Farnyars is just waiting for somebody to go with him at least a pack of cars he, he, he he's near driving as well but right now he's using a little side draft head right rear core panel Richard Regan Jr. sees it goes to the outside and he's trying to stop the momentum of that outside row. Looks like he has successfully done that. In the meantime, uh -oh. Farnyards drops to the inside. Oh. <laughs> closes the door. Boy, and they're coming up on a lap car. Kyle Cammer here. Cammer's going to keep it up to the outside. Going to stay out of trouble. Great That's job by Kyle Cammer. Let the leaders get by. Here we go. Farnyards goes to the top. He's got a fender in. Farnyards will get to the line on Richard Regan Jr. this time by. I do believe he had the big old run coming off turn four. He's getting a push from Andrew Payne. Farnyards to the front. He's going to dump his uh, partner out there. Andrew Payne drops right in front of Richard Regan Jr. If Regan can probably get clear of Andrew Payne, he can hop to the outside row. Ain't going to happen this time by. Boy, and Farnyards back to the lead of this race. They're passing Gary Sexton there down on the inside. Spent a long time in the pits there getting repair on that car, but he is back out. Look at, the note. Look at Richard Regan Jr. doing a little bumper tapping in the middle yeah. of the corner. Now he's going to jump to the outside row. 
maybe he's having second thoughts. I assume just jump on out there and, and have and kind of force another driver to help you to get towards the front. But so far, Regan is actually going to do some bump drafting of his own. Boy, and they're starting to lose the mid-pack of this field. Up front, running away from it here just a little bit. Uh, your top 17 got uh, almost a five-second advantage on Daniel Jackson back there in 18. Man, Richard Regan Jr. just had a drafting partner, and I bet he's happy. He just collected just uh, Gerald Campbell, and they just went to the front around Farnyard just like that. Andrew Payne's like, man, can I push somebody? <laughs> but uh, nobody doesn't want to work with Andrew Payne out towards the front right now. He does have a traffic it. partner behind him, though. I, I, I don't get it uh, why you wouldn't want to work with Payne. He's done such a great job already this race. Oh, oh, oh. Gerald Campbell looking awful squirrely there in the middle. Two-car tandem might work, not three-car tandem. No, I don't know about that. Yeah, we'll, we'll see here. Trying to, right now, just patience by Payne. Here comes Ryan Hill to give him a little push. Doing everything he can to try to get that high line going. Justin ah. Bolton just kind of dropped towards the inside saying, man, we're, we're not going yeah, anywhere right now. Yeah, he just sold those two out. He sold them out. He sold Barnard's, them out for position. Barnyard's thought about it. He's like, no, now's not the time. Oh, Ooh, almost contact. contact between Bolton and Payne. Was that Payne? Yes, it was. Payne and Bolton made contact. Ethan Moore. Looking towards the outside on Farnyard. Maybe he can produce something. He yeah. says no. I think he was getting fresh air. I don't, think be. Moore, I don't think Moore had a plan there. Well, the funny thing is I'm surprised. I mean, I'm surprised the cars are really, if, if that's the case, I'd be really surprised the cars are starting to overheat when you're not 100% bump draft somebody. But, again, it can happen. Oh, Farnyard's a little bit in danger. he got to push him behind. And at the same time, as he was pushing Campbell. And there is still plenty of racing behind these guys as some of these cars are that were dropping back are starting to come forward again. And you got this whole line back here led by Justin Bolton. Farnyard's with trouble there. Whoa, and he gets passed by Ethan Moore. Farnyard's had a big moment. He's going to lose these front three. He's dropped back here to Bolton. Oh, I think he collected the apron and just got a little sideways. There is banking in the trial. Yeah, you don't want to tow. You don't want to tow that line too much, though, during the race. Daniel like Jackson gotta... just got on the radio practically and text saying he's got too much damage to keep up with the draft. That's very unfortunate for Daniel. It really is, man. That eighty-four, uh, that eighty-four looked good to hear early. Look what's happening up front, though. The the top four pulling away. Got a couple cars we're passing here. Mark Cleewell, obviously, was one of those that had trouble early. The 18. Adam Eisenhower up there in the Sim Speed Shop. Chevrolet Camaro. These guys stay out of the way really, really well. Great job as they let the leaders get through. There's your top four. As they said, Richard Regan, Gerald Campbell, Ethan Moore, and Andrew Farnyars. We got 10 to go. It might be Sorry, 10 to 11. go. Oh, 11. Might be 11 to go. But I tell you what, there's a driver we haven't really discussed that we normally do discuss almost every single week. And that's Dylan Jones. He's yes. the first guy leading that outside thank, row. Thank you for bringing that up. And look who's there right behind him. Oh, William Locklear. That's another Carolina driver there, William. Uh, one of those guys that wasn't sure if he'd be able to run tonight. He is in this race. Give it Dylan Jones a pretty oh, good man. push right now. There is activity up towards the front because Ethan Moore, he wants to go up to the outside, but he keeps playing that inside-outside scenario. Maybe he's just getting too hot. But either way, however you look at it, Andrew Farnyard is going to take over that position, and that's going to allow Ethan Moore to hug right back into the draft. You know, looking through the field tonight, most of the Chevrolet drivers have switched over to Camaro. 
Ryan Hill keeping it real, though. Still in, that, in the, uh, the SS. No changes for the Hill Coast Chevrolet. Up 20 spots. Ethan Moore right in front of him, up 19 himself. It's a race to win the second stage. Here comes that second pack. Andrew Payne leading them. And we're about to have a big tussle here over these last seven, seven or eight laps. Might be single file right now, but uh, with all everything that's kind of going on, I, I, oh, there goes Barnyards. He's getting a punt push from Ethan Moore. Richard Regan Jr. trying to play defense. He's got to be really careful when he does that because he almost got spun out from Campbell because Campbell's coming up in a hurry. Here we go. Battle up towards the front. Barnyards wants to go for stage points. So is Regan Jr. Regan is just trying to get as much stage points as possible so he can get in on points, possibly a win. Barnyards already has a win, but he still wants to go for it. Well, at in and out we'd call this a two-by-two. Two. Payne back there trying to make it a three-by-three. Three. Get up under here. Ryan Hill. Bolton still leads everybody behind in his top six. Who Regan and Farnyars with almost a little contact there. Farnyars is getting a heavy, pretty good push right there from Ethan Moore in the 23 car in the Camaro ZL1. Pushing that forward of Farnyars to the front. Farnyars slams the door. Oh, contact, net code contact uh -oh. between Ethan Moore and Gerald Campbell. Justin Bolton gets damaged. Spinning goes Ethan Moore. Unbelievable. Great job by everybody for avoiding that. That could have been even bigger. And race control already calling. That will be the end of the second stage. I could have sworn I seen contact there, a net code contact there. We have to see on the replay here. We're live on replay. Right here. Just a maybe little just bit. A, maybe just a little bit, yeah. I mean, Campbell's car does drift up the track a little bit there, but too close to call. And uh, yep. fortunately, not a lot of the cars get caught up in that. In fact, Ethan Moore gets a fortunate spin. You're going to watch watch this here on Robert Moore. His car is going to spin around, not make any contact with the wall or anything, and then right back in his tracks heading forward. Oh, he, no, he does Bolton. get some contact with Bolton, yeah. Bolton does get contact. Back Bolton's already in the pits. And yeah, here we go on board Bolton and they're head down in turn number one. There's gonna be a spin. Bolton's gonna brace and just I mean he, realistically there's cars on his inside. He has no choice, gonna fall Ryan Hill. Yeah. Does have damage. That's pretty yeah. good damage actually. Well obviously yeah, and, and the, the pinched car obviously gets pinched up there, nowhere to go. And like I said, he's already he's already head for the pits and unfortunately uh that that's gonna be it for Justin Bolton. He's parking it tonight. They've taken the number one behind the wall. I'm sorry, the number seven behind the wall. Pit Road should be open right now. Uh, I assume everybody may just stay out here for the stage points. This is going to be the caution, obviously. Um, but very unfortunate for Regan Dram. Maybe not. They're going to come right on in. Coming to you, Nick. Oh, yeah, everyone coming down here. Uh, we just saw Justin Bolton come down as, as well as uh, Daniel Jackson. Uh, Jackson's still in the pits, but everyone whole field now coming into their pit, uh, pit boxes. I think this would be the caution to take four tires because you don't know when that next caution is going to happen. Uh, play it safe for four tires. Man. Oh, Farnyars overdrove his pit box just a ever so slightly. That oh, might cost him, but left sides are going up right now. Just left sides. He's going to take left sides only, and he's off of pit road. Looks like Andrew Payne, and is that uh, Dylan Jones I see? Yeah, interesting strategy taking just left side tires. Uh, we have five sets tonight, including the set you started on. Not many people I don't think are going to be too threatened by running out of tires tonight. But, you know, uh, try to maintain that track position up top and run a different strategy. Well, here we are. And uh, we said that third stage was going to be 51 laps. Well... It's going to be just a couple less than uh, 51. we probably going to get started here with, I think, maybe 49 to go, maybe 50. 
we'll see here what the lights on the pace car do. Danny when, Rogers. Uh, they get out of the super stretch and, and out of turns three and four. What was that, Danny, Tanner? Yeah, Danny Rogers. He stays out under this caution. Uh, we'll have to see if he comes down this time by. But if he does not, that's just telling me he's just going to play track position uh, to try to stay out front. And obviously the caution laps here will help him save as much fuel as possible. He will eventually have to pit within the next... Uh, 20, 25 laps-ish. Uh, maybe a little less than that because it is an 80% fuel load. Yeah, and y you know what? Danny's got some pretty significant damage on that car. I, I, I'm i seeing uh, damage on the rear end, damage on the front end, and, boy, I always get concerned about damage on the front end is is what's that doing to the cooling of the car? Is there possibly uh, something damaged there that might cost you uh, hot water or uh, hot oil, one or the other, both can lead to blowing the car up or severely reducing your horsepower. So if he stays out and, and doesn't come in and get any of that damage, to, to at least try to get any of it repaired, it should be a very interesting start to the race because we certainly don't know right here what kind of race car he has left as we see a couple of cars pull off in the pits, Cleewell and Camera, a couple of them, and uh, they're going to get try and get a little bit more damage fixed in their machines but it will be up to Danny Rogers if he wants to start on the inside or the outside. Tanner, where do you want to start? In Danny Rogers' case, with the amount of damage that he currently has, I would say go for the inside road just in case. The reason why I say that is because if you if you can't get up to speed with that damage, you can just kind of go below the L line and kind of pull off it without, without no factor of anybody else. So that would just be the smart and safest thing to do. But if you're feeling really confident or if you even tested it under this last green flag run that, hey, I can run with the draft, I still have the speed, then go ahead. You know, maybe just either, either way, it really wouldn't too much matter as long as you try to clear the guy on the inside. Uh, because when you go down turn one, that inside row is just going to have the advantage. And you see a few drivers dropping down to the apron there. We've been talking about this uh, in, in our chat, uh, uh, trying to save a little bit of fuel. Uh, there is definitely fuel to be saved here at Talladega on these caution flags, uh, running in fourth gear, um, turn the motor off and on, clutch it, ride down on the bottom. A car doesn't uh, theoretically doesn't use as much fuel when it's flat as it does up on the banking. So, uh, you know, again, uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll uh, we'll keep an eye on those guys trying to just squeeze as much fuel. We do know this: you can't make it to the end on however much fuel you've got right now. You're going to need to come in at least one more time for fuel. Tires uh, that might be an option. You may decide to keep that set on. It may be a splash and dash to the end. Uh, we'll see. You know, cautions will dictate everything. How many of them we get here in this third and final stage? I don't know. Um, what we have seen historically as well, the ends of these races sometimes do yield a few caution flags. We've even had several green-white checker finishes this season. We're prepared to handle anything here on the Global Sim Racing Channel tonight in the Bromonte 250 here from Talladega Super Speedway right here in the beautiful hills and well, what they call mountains of uh, Talladega, the Talladega Mountains, and uh, track sits right at the base of those, just to the, uh, just to the, it would be the east uh, of those mountains, actually. Uh, uh, like I said earlier, I've been there a few times. I know the, the landscape pretty well. In fact, when you're driving through Interstate 40 there, uh, boy, the best time to see that track is in the early dawn, uh, as the sun's starting to come out, and uh, you look off to the right when you're heading east there. There sits Talladega. You see those red and blue uh, seat backs that adorn the entire speedway all the way around. Uh, uh, and they've they've never reduced any grandstands here, unlike uh, some other super speedways out there. They still have them all. All the grandstands are still set up here at Talladega. Been that way since they opened this track back in the 60s. And the Ford Mustang pace car, as we said, bringing them around at a 65-mile-an-hour uh, speed limit here used to be 80. That was another thing we were talking about in the break. Uh, there was a time when uh, in I racing the pace car paced at 80 miles an hour here at Talladega, but I guess safety concerns uh, suggested that they may slow them down a bit, and they did. So 65 miles an hour is how we roll. We are on the super stretch now. The lights are out on that Ford pace car. 
Danny Rogers, much talked about here. Damage on the car. He's going to restart from the point. Has elected to sit there on the inside. And if there is any trouble with the speed in that car, that bottom line is in trouble, Tanner. Yeah, it'll be a little bit of a concern for drivers such as Andrew Payne. Uh, and another driver in fifth place would be Eric Stanford. On the inside, Richard Regan Jr. Those drivers will have to be a little cautious here on what's going to happen with Danny Rogers on this restart. Um, and as far as fuel is concerned, because I'm sure they're still clutching in the middle of the corners, even though they're ready to go. I tell you what, man, I've lost races at Talladega, actually mainly Daytona. Uh, one time I ran out of gas on the last lap, come off turn four at Daytona, lost the race because I ran out of fuel. And they all just zoomed by me on the outside. So, I mean... You don't want to lose, get, uh, you know, run out of fuel on a restricted plate track. You want to save as much as possible since we're coming to the green here right now. Danny Rogers, some damage on his race car, but will it hold up? That's going to be the question on his restart. Uh, like I said, I'd be a little more caution, cautious on that uh, inside row. All right, here we go. Pace cars off. Danny Rogers going to get ready to set this field off, and he's gone. We're mean green and back underway here at Talladega Super Speedway. The Bromonte 250 back going here live. We have 48 laps to finish this race, Tanner. That is a huge mistake on Danny Rogers' part because he just gunned it uh, just before they come, come take the green flag. And the reason why is because of that. You're going to get freight trained and you're... <laughs> you might have a dancing party you might not you're just they're just gonna have a big old run coming up on you danny rogers he's in trouble he's gonna hug the inside row they're Ooh. all gonna abandon danny rogers as andrew farnyards does take the lead rogers falling back 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 until he's able to get up to speed and yeah. in the draft i'm afraid that damage has got rogers just way off pace here he can't even seem to get in behind anybody and, and get a run where he's, he's stolen out here and they're all going to get by him. Everybody's going to clear him now. You ever hear, oh, man, Ryan Hill got really loose in the tri-oval, man. Yeah. He went through them bumps, and that car just got sideways, shot him to the outside row. So he's going to have, he has no choice for it right now to run the outside row. But, man, that hurt Ryan Hill. Well, we had a lot of drivers asleep on that start, and uh, right, we're lucky that we got away clean. Look at this. So two, two packs already. Tanner, they've split up. Yeah, and that second group of guys back there, which is led by Ray uh, Ray Richard, and I do believe that's number who's on that outside row back there. Will, Will Locklear. William Locklear. Okay, in the here comes Kevin Fetty making a move on him. Well, the battle up front is single file. They're heading into the tri oval. Yeah, they Four are. The lap fifty. Now, I got to point something else here, here, Sean, is that this is the danger zone for guys in that second pack. The leaders are running single file. When they're running single file like this, they're going to be faster. So, yep. like, Ray Richard on back, if they continue to battle for whatever reason, they, they will lose time. So they have to remain single file to try to catch the leaders. They really, really do, and, and everybody's got to stay in line and do it well here. Uh, Kevin Fetty, Judd Danielson there and uh, dylan jones all play a big part in their effort to try and get back to the front i forgot about william locklear's there locklear stepping out of line that's not going to help i i found it hard to believe he needed air that quickly we just got restarted yeah i i don't think a lot of these guys need that much air that's actually helping that the, the air that moves around, that moves around these cars and, and the way the draft works that's helped that's hurting the second group right now you know what uh, Talarico is in in jeopardy of losing uh the draft here richard regan as he continues to drop back ryan hill's coming forward to him just a bit then they've got these three cars right behind him danny rogers mark mcfadden uh getting in there and uh, i left somebody out I, I know i did the 42 alan elwood actually elwood on the bumper ryan hill right now hill closing in on Talarico. Yep, they just got to remain single file like this, do everything they can. Maybe Hill can give them a little bit of a, bu uh, of a bump draft. They are right now catching, as they go by some black cars on the inside, they are catching Richard Regan Jr., who's currently in sixth place. They practically just caught him right now. Yeah. So a six-car pack just turned into about an 11-12-car pack. They got the memo. Look at Talarico run. Talarico's like, hey, man, I've got the momentum. I'm going up top, but he's got nobody with him. He's going to stall out next to Richard Regan down the super stretch. 
Oh, Tallarico had big aspirations up there. Maybe he's going to get a little late help. No, he's going to drop back in line Ooh. right in front of Ryan Hill. That's hard right there because if it, ha they have such momentum coming up on you. You just close the door. Uh, sometimes you can't really get off the gas or brake because you have another car behind you that's pushing you. Oh, Rich Regan Jr., he wants to go to the outside. He sees an opportunity. Andrew Payne might see an opportunity as well. No, he's going to hug back right back towards the inside. Wait, Rich Regan, he's got some help from the number 55 of Ryan Hill. Not much, man. If they'd have just followed Tallarico before, man, I really think they'd have got him. I think they'd have made it all the way to the front. Man, Andrew Payne, he's still trying to determine, man, should I go to the outside? Should I jump right in front of him? You got, I mean, it, the problem is with that, you have to make that decision. Oh, oh, Payne, Payne was either loose, bobbled, or really meant to do that. Still undecided. Is he one of those voters we call undecided? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, man, and, and Regan's lost all help up there. Hill's dropped off. In fact, Hill's going to drop in line. Richard Regan Jr. stuck up top all by himself. They're yeah, they were still battling in that second pack back there. Now they're single file, but up towards the front, it's getting a little dicey now. Andrew Payne, man, he's still trying to elect whether he wants to go to the outside row and help Regan. That's got to be frustrating Regan just a little bit. In a way, it's kind of helping Richard Regan because right now yeah. he's got no drafting help, but well, he, he's using that draft of pain. It's all side draft right now for Regan. Yeah, exactly. I, you know what, though? We gave up on Danny Rogers. You know, remember he started this race, on, or restarted this uh, uh, this race here for the third segment. And he's got help. Up front, he's got a little bit of help now, and they're actually getting back to Ryan Hill. Hey, wasn't Mc, uh, McFadden like a uh, lap down at one point? <laughs> and he's up there in 11th place, up towards the front of the lead pack right now. Uh, I believe you're right. Mark McFedden did fall a lap down, but uh, is back on the lead now. They're shuffling around going back there. They need to stay in line. I'm going to catch Richard Regan. That's the way to do it. Stay in line, boys. Come on, get up here with the party. Tell you what, I think that second group of cars back here have finally got together and say, all right, we need to run single file and try to catch this group. They lap cars down there on the bottom, staying out of the way, out of the racing line. It's Gary Sexton, and then you got uh, Jay Queen. Gary out here just trying to pick up as many points as he can. You never know what can happen here. Remember, he was our driver on the outside looking in. Richard Regan Jr. stepping to the outside line. We're on board with him. He's in trouble because he's got no drafting help right now. Side draft might help, but I think the uh, he's a little too far back to snip a draft off of the 93 of Andrew Payne. So Richard Regan now looking. He's going to drop to the back unless he gets some help. He's going to hop right in front. Who is that? He just hopped right in front of. Oh, oh, oh no! Oh, Danny, Rogers. Boy, Danny Rogers is around. I think he had a little bit of help. I think Danny had a little bit of help there. Oh, oh no, that's really, really a. You got well, that's a tough call. You had, you already had damage, and you run great. You're running up towards the front with the lead pack, and an unfortunate miscue. Yeah, I, I honestly think it was a little bit of, well, there was. There was contact between McFadden and, and Danny, and that's 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 going to be the end of Danny's race, I'm afraid. McFadden, we're on board with him now. You, right There's, there, you might you always want to try to keep a good square right there, but right here he's ran the right rear quarter yeah. panel and just turns him. Well, now we've got to, I, we still don't have enough uh we, we've still got i'm geez let me get to my point we still have too many laps here left in the race i don't think filling up right here is going to get you to the end um, it was 28 to 32 we said right was the window yeah 28 to 32 laps 
that. We restart with what? Maybe 35 to go? 34 to go? I think you're going to be just outside the window. Oh, man. And didn't I just comment that I hate uh, fuel at Talladega and Daytona? <laughs> I've had so many bad experiences with that, man. I got... Guess, guess, guess what? We're you know we're talking about uh, caution flags. It's it's not out. They, they didn't uh, they didn't throw it there. We are alive and green and boy, I don't know what I was talking about, Tanner. We've got all wrapped up in a caution flag and Andrew Farnyards and David Washington are still up leading this uh, this pack. Yeah, and if you're asking yourself why wasn't there a caution, uh, realistically, uh, with a big pack because everybody's kind of separated right now. There's different packs out there right now. Danny Rogers hit that wall so hard, it flung him back to the inside and was out of the way of on the racetrack. So it, it, iRacing itself did not throw that caution flag. We're still green. But speaking of fuel, of fuel, if you're in the draft, such as David Washington, Eric Stanford, Andrew Payne, them guys who are drafting, they can actually run three quarter front and save a little fuel. It, it's certainly done. It, it's certainly possible. You know, I guess I've I've got the I've got the yellow flag uh, yellow flag fever after that race at the Roval last week. <laughs> I'm still seeing visions of uh, yellows in the uh, corner uh, top left hand corner of my screen. And uh, boy, uh, they continue to get by lap cars. The battle up front is intense. Washington giving Farnyards all the push he needs right now to keep that car out front. Payne, Colton, Salik, and. Well, there's another name we haven't talked about much tonight. Uh, Colton Salek now up into the top five here, Tanner. Yeah, he started 20th, and he's been in the mid-pack majority of the day. Now he's in the top five, just run single file. Man, go Colton, because that's where you want to be. You're just running single file. You're minding your P's and Q's out there. You're maybe saving a little fuel by run three-quarter throttle. You're not bump drafting heavy. I mean, this is a good position for Colton at the, to capitalize on something good. Yeah, and the next bit of cars up ahead of the track for them are going to be uh, Joe Campbell and Ethan Moore. A little less than 13 seconds up ahead of them. A whole lot of cars coming through here. A little bit of an update the, 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 of that second group. They were they are not. They actually lost four seconds to that lead pack. That lead pack still remains single file, and that's what they are trying to do. They just want to escape those guys who are still running single file in that second pack. So good job on everybody for running single file. But unfortunately, if you're in that second pack, you're doing all you can do. Well, uh, everybody having a little bit of patience here after that, uh, the, the, the restart of, I think everybody's a little bit gun shy right now after that, uh, that restart we had for the beginning of the third stage. Seems like everybody determined to kind of keep this thing going here. Payne, I think, is out getting some air right now behind Eric Stanford. Nothing really lost there. Nothing gained. He slips back in line now. Careful not to go down too low between <laughs> below that yellow line. Just a little bit, and I'm sure when these guys do have pit stops, they will be communicating to one another uh, because you're, you're going to want a drafting partner when you pit. And pit road probably is the biggest scary moment to hear at Talladega other than watching for the big one. The reason why is because you're going almost 200 miles an hour. You have to get that thing down to 55 miles an hour, and sometimes you overshoot the pits, you speed on pit road, and sometimes the brakes ain't very good, and you slide through your pit box. So you really got to be careful on pit road. Yes, you do. And, uh, when we get there, when these drivers decide to pull off, which uh, the window is slowly opening, I can hear it creaking in the background. The pit window is slowly opening. Nick, be ready down there because we're going to send in your way here really soon. Some may decide to ride this out for a while here, and uh, I think if everything stays calm, you might do that. But I don't know. We'll we'll see. I know one thing: if you decide to come down on the green flag, you better have a partner because you don't want to get stuck out there alone, do you? No, you don't. You always want a drafting partner every single time you pit under a green flag pit stop. If you don't. You're going to be the Lone Ranger, and you could, I mean, you might have a big lead, but they're eventually going to catch you. 185, 180 to 185 miles an hour is significantly different by yourself than when you got a pack of cars that's going 200 miles an hour. Yeah, it's, uh, well, that's just, that's just the law of physics, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, 
You know, the second pack right now, which is 10th on back, Dylan Jones, Will Locklear. That's a pack of cars that are carrying a little bit of damage. But uh, the leaders certainly coming up on uh, a group of drivers now. And they are catching him at a full rate of knots. Gerald Campbell's going to stay out of the way and stay up top as our leaders come by. Next, they are going to get to, I think that's Ethan Moore just up ahead. Nobody doing anything crazy here. Nobody really stepping out of line. Just managing the track. And then I, I say that, and Alan Elwood steps out, but uh, they're closing in on Ethan Moore and Jay Queen here pretty quick. Well, I'll tell you what, Elwood's, Elwood stepping out did not help him at all. Yeah, I mean, we've only seen it one time tonight, that two cars working on that high side. And that's the only time we've seen it. Otherwise, it's practically just been a multiple cars. So Elwood, he's going to, he needs to do everything he can to stick with Ryan Hill because he currently right now with that kind of a gap, separation gap between Hill and Elwood, he's in danger of losing that pack. So, Elwood's got a problem. Something's going on with that car. He is dropping through the field now like a hot potato on the floor. That thing is just wiggling around all over the place and not on pace with these leaders. As they pass the two cars there, Ethan Moore and Jay Queen, they'll keep it up top and out of, way, and out of the way. I do see some splitter damage on Elwood, but I don't think that would be the cause of it. I think it's be he, he's it's losing the draft. Damage. He's losing the draft. The only yeah. thing I can really come up with, Sean, is that uh, his temperatures were really high, and he needed to breathe that engine because usually when the temperatures blink, that's kind of expiring your engine just a little yeah. bit. But I, I, I don't know. Uh, boy, maybe, maybe he got dumped there. He'll... I don't know. He's got some damage on the left front of the car that really could be affecting his Oh, what's Ryan Hill? Ryan Hill was below. Oh, my goodness. He was below the yellow line entering turn three, pushed up the racetrack on Ethan Moore. Ethan Moore uh, did a crisscross. What was that all about? Well, apparently Hill is having a little bit of trouble out there right now. Just got a warning from race control. So something going on there, and uh, not quite sure all what that's about, but uh, obviously uh, problems for Ryan Hill. No um, problems for the front of this field, though, as uh, Andrew Farnyars leads them all around. David Washington, Eric Stanford, Andrew Payne, Colton Salek. Oh, Tanner boy. Alarico. I hate to say this, but uh, with uh, Ryan Hill, he did go. He passed a 23 car below the yellow line. Not sure if race control is going to black flag him for that. Okay, getting a report here. The 55 of Ryan Hill was told uh, to, to give back to position or he will be posted for oh, There you go. Yeah. So, abusing that yellow line. Can't do that here at Talladega. Can't do it on the Super Speedways, period. Oh. Contact back there between Ryan Hill. It was that Gerald Campbell in the six? That, that was Gerald Campbell. He made contact. Well, he's all over the back bumper of the 23 car. Still with the lead pack, though. Gerald Campbell is a lap down. Maybe, I mean, if you're a race leader, maybe you could probably uh, uh, use a lap car as a pick, but Campbell so far not fighting with anybody. Up towards the front, Campbell is actually the second car lap down. The first car one lap down is actually Ethan Moore in that 23 car. And he's actually going towards the front a little yeah. bit here with help from Ryan Hill <laughs> using right. the lap car as a pick. I, you know what? I, I This is the first time we've seen anybody try the top line here in a little while. Uh, it's been a bit before any cars got up there, tried to threaten any. Ethan Moore has spent a lot of time up there tonight. Payne's got to be careful. He thought he was free uh, to, to get up there in that line. He was not. He was not clear. He's still not clear. In fact, Ethan Moore is coming alongside. It's going to be another spot. Man, oh man, oh man, great thing for Ethan Moore is that he is the lucky dog. There's actually two different races going on in this first pack. Battle for the lead at times, and as well as for the lucky dog position between 
the number six of Campbell and Ethan Moore. But right now, Moore's got that advantage. He's going to the front, you helping out Ryan Hill. Ryan Hill using the lap car as the pick. And I do believe Washington wants to try to go up there and stop that momentum from happening. It looks like kind of did just a little bit. See if they carry some legs down the back straightaway. They're doing so well. Ethan Morse side drafting aggressively on Andrew Payne down the back straightaway. Not too much of a momentum gain right there for the two drivers. But man, they were they were rolling towards the front for a little bit. Yeah, they were. They they were. They tell you what, they consistency, that's the key. If you if you're gonna make it work, stay dedicated to it. Hill got to try and find a way. Oh, there we go. There's 93 stepping out. He likes to do that every now and then. Sometimes people and drive, uh, race fans and drivers say, why is this lap car racing me so hard? Well, realistically, in the case scenario for Ethan Moore, he's a playoff driver. He's trying to gain as much points as, as he can. He's trying to hope for a caution to get that lucky dog and be with the race leaders. Hey, Ethan Moore starting to inch his way up here a little bit down the super stretch. Getting a little bit of a push from Ryan Hill. Not much. Hill's kind of dancing around back there. He's really having trouble holding on to it. I'm I'm wondering if he's got a little bit of damage he's dealing with. It. He does. Maybe he's got that, uh, got that car right in line where it needs to be. Yeah, I think he's got a little bit of right rear spoiler damage. Not affecting his speed, but as far as handling is concerned, it'll be a whole different subject. Speaking of dancing around, Andrew Payne looks like he was dancing around just a little bit there. He's losing a little momentum on the inside row. Ryan Hill still trying to be aggressive with uh, helping out Ethan Moore to try to challenge towards the front. If they could just get one more car, if they could maybe get by uh, Andrew Payne here and maybe Payne slip up behind them, he could really give a lot of help. Payne's got to be careful, though. I mean, he does have the uh, uh, that Colton Solid car right behind him. You can't slow down too much. There you go. Here's an opportunity for Payne. And no, they all decide. That was a good Ethan move, Moore though. Said, yeah, Ethan Moore said, I got enough of this on the top side. I'm going to get drop down the line here. So now we're already back to being single file here. Uh, turn one. Out of turn two. Time to head down the super stretch again. 22 laps to go in this race. Well, I can say one thing here, Sean, is that if we do have a green, we will have a green flight pit oh. stop. It hey, we got him now. We got him now, Nick. Who's coming down? Uh, I believe that was Alan Elwood uh, right now on pit stops. We do have more people, Judd Danielson and uh, Mark McFadden. Gary Sexton on pit road. He's been on there uh, the majority of the night, unfortunately, for him. Ray yep, Richard is uh Oh the leaders. Oh, here we go. And the leaders are in. The leaders are in. They all come in together. Yeah, everyone looking for clean stops. Absolutely necessary, uh, especially under green flag conditions. You slide through your box, you're gonna lose multiple seconds on track. Man, if I was these drivers right now, I'd be taking two tires and getting the heck out of there. At least fill that thing up because uh at least at least two tires okay well here's who did stay out foreign yards david washington eric stanford ryan hill ethan moore now ethan's ethan's right there with him and ethan's already coming in pit or has he no he hasn't i'm sorry okay ethan's a lot down i take i take that back here come the leaders now everybody rolling oh and ethan oh contact there. Oh, Barnyard's nearly got booted coming in there. And then we've got more David Washington, Eric Stanford, and Ryan Hill behind them. Well, that wasn't exciting at all. Farnyard still coming down the pit lane, pulling into his box now. Got to hit his marks there. He hits him perfectly. Yeah, all of the pit stops. Uh, Jay Queen slid through his box there. Other than that, everyone looking pretty good. David Washington with a pretty aggressive slide coming out as well. Richard Regan coming out of four now. Colton Solick right on his rear bumper. I'm sure that check up there coming into pit lane is not going to help their time getting back out on the track much. Not at all. Regan, Solick closing quick. Kane, Tallarico right behind him. 
Here comes the pack of four. They're closing, closing quickly. Oh man, there's gonna be a gang of cars right ahead of them as they're yeah. catching them. Stanford can't get on track in time. He's slow. Boy, and they are coming up real quick on David Washington down there low. Ooh. Not up to speed. Lap cars up top. Camera Cleewell in the 18. Oh, boy. And there goes oh, Ethan Moore. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh. Three wide this for the race crazy. lead. Barnyards, no help for Andrew Barnyards. At that time, by the start finish line, it was Regan Jr. Wow. And, uh, well, guess what? They're all back on track together. But uh, Richard Regan Jr. leading this pack now. He is your new leader. Not the first time he's led tonight. Oh, and no, he's going to go to the bottom and up to the outside. Colton Salik, Andrew Payne. Salik going to try and take the lead of this race all of a sudden. I tell you what, Andrew Farnyard is actually a little bit in danger on leading this, lead, uh, losing this lead pack. He's got to get some help from Tanner Tellerico. No, Tanner Tellerico's up towards the front. Who's that behind uh, Farnyard's there? That would be David Washington. He's a little too further back. Yeah, Washington uh, slow on that pit stop, and it's certainly got him out of the draft right now. Farnyard is losing it quickly. Salik is in the lead, getting a good push from Andrew Payne, but down on the bottom, here comes Richard Regan. Ethan Moore making that inside line move. And we got a couple guys in this top five that's bound for the race lead. Driver who started from the top 20 outside the top 20 as well. Drivers such as Ryan Hale and Tanner Tellerico. Andrew Farnyars is clinging, clinging to the very, very back end of this draft. He is about two miles an hour slower. It's going to be tough to catch him. They're continuing to fight side by side up here, though. It's going to give him a chance to catch this pack. Salek still up on the outside. Richard Regan Jr. still down to the outside. They still have their dance partners behind him. And top. now that top line is starting to move. Here we go. They got four cars up there, two on the bottom. Richard Regan, Ethan Moore losing this battle quick here, Tanner. Yeah, most certainly. Oh, day. he goes to the bottom. Took the opportunity. That's going to even up the playing field. Oh, no, not anymore because Tanner Tellerico hopped towards the inside. That's going to leave Colton Selleck and Ryan Hill on that higher line. This is just a big Chevy fest up front. I, I think these are all Chevys. There were a few uh, Fords earlier, but well, now no, it's all a, Andrew Farnyars is in that Ford, but he's he's back behind him. All Chevys up front. Camaro's in the SS of Ryan Hill. They're passing Kyle Kammer again. Kammer up on the outside, going to stay out of the way. Oh. Salik up there all by him lonesome now. He's going to drop in the line behind Ryan Hill. Don't count out that 88 of Farnyars, because I think he's going to catch up, too, right ahead of him with Ethan Moore. Use a lap car as a pick. Well, it, it not only is a pick, but actually help uh, to get up here. Uh, he was coming along, and now Ethan Moore is in between them, and Ethan Moore is real close to losing the tail end of this here. Salik is that car running in, uh, running in fifth. Andrew Payne leading this race. In fact, I think this might be the first time he's up to the lead of this race tonight, Tanner. I, I don't remember calling him from the front. Richard Regan Jr. is that driver chasing him. And Tanner Tallarico, who is this man? We, uh, we've we not seen him this season. He's looked awful good tonight in that number one. Uh, he's certainly got the right number on the side of the car uh, if, you, if you plan to finish first. Obviously, he's not running for points, but... He is sure running for the checkered flag right now. We're going to hit the line out of four. They are going to come to 14 laps to go in the Bromonte 250 here tonight at Talladega Super Speedway. Andrew Payne's been up towards the front practically all night long after starting third, but I don't believe, you're correct, I don't believe he's led a lap until now. Uh, so Andrew Payne, he's actually put himself in position to be there at the end to fight for a win. 
Barnyards yep. is back in it now from using the uh, little bit of assistance from Ethan Moore. Oh, Colton Sellett below the yellow line. Looks like he's backing off. Yeah, he definitely backed off, did not make the mistake of trying to pass Ryan Hill down there on the bottom below the line. Again, what Ethan Moore is doing here, really just merely helping Andrew Farnyard as Ethan Moore a lap down from these guys. Andrew Payne still in control up front. Richard Regan Jr. still at his back door. And that second pack of cars that we talked about, they, they lost about eight seconds in the pits. They now find themselves 24 seconds behind this pack. And uh, unless we get a caution, I don't think they're going to be able to make that up, Tanner. That is a long way to go. It's not going to mm. happen for those other drivers unless we get a caution flag. But if you're up towards the front, you don't want that caution flag to come because that just throws everybody back into the mix. So, I mean, these guys up towards the front are riding pretty comfortable. Right now, it's just a matter of uh, which one of these drivers up towards the front, at least the top six drivers, who's going to win this race? Well, it's the uh, the Chevrolet of Andrew Payne, who is certainly running for points up there at the front. Richard Regan Jr. chasing him. Remember, a win stamps your entry into the final round. I'm sorry, into the second round of the playoffs, which will begin here in a couple of weeks. Brian Hill back to the top side, outside there of Andrew Farnyard. He's going to drop back in. Farnyard's going to go back to the outside. Come right up along the right rear quarter panel of Colton Solik. I think Farnyard just needed a little bit of fresh air as he ducks back in. They have dropped. They've started to drop Ethan Moore here slowly, so... Not there to give that help to Farnyars any longer. Farnyars is going to go up top by himself. He's going to try and use the side draft on Colton Salik as they get to the line. Andrew Farnyars is going to pick up another spot. And here he comes. He's not done. He's coming up alongside now the one of Tallarico. Problem is with Farnyars, he's the lone ranger of the Ford in this mix. Everybody else is, the, is, is a Chevrolet. So no, so far, nobody wants to help Farnyars at the moment. Not saying that is the case, but... Uh, Everybody just pretty content running in single file. If there's one driver I have to pick that's going to run with Farnyards, it's probably going to be that 55 back there. He's been practically running with everybody on that high yeah. side. And, and you know what happened, though? You know who got shuffled out of this whole mix? David Washington and Eric Stanford got shuffled out of this entire deal. They have dropped back down 10 seconds uh, from, from the rest of uh, these leaders here up front the top six. It's, the, it's him and Eric Stanford. They just can't pedal hard enough to get back to it. Battle for the lead. Regan trying to go to the front here. Gets to the outside. He's got a little help from Andrew Farnyars. What a way for Cole, uh, Richard Regan Jr. to capitalize on today's race. He's had a great day so far. Can he close the deal? He's getting help from one of the best drivers in the series, and that's uh, the number 88 of Andrew Farnyars. Challenging Andrew Payne for the top spot. Great way for Andrew Payne, too. I mean, he's in the same boat as uh, Richard Regan. Boy, it's it's all come down to this here as they come into the trial, make their way to the start-finish line. It's going to be nine to go. We are dropped down to the single digits. This is a nervous pack of six. Pack of six cars, all of them are hungry for at least a win. Andrew Farnyars, he's been he's won he's won a lot, but he's never he, he's always hungry for that win. He's just well, trying to go for more. Poor Ethan Moore, they dropped him all the way back down. He is in fifteenth. Uh, he's lost the draft to that pack. David Washington, Eric Stanford are now closing in on Ethan Moore. But those two, again, have just kind of lost touch with the field here at this point, almost a full 12 seconds back from the rest of the group. Your top six, Andrew Payne, Richard Regan Jr., Tanner Tallarico, Andrew Farnyars, Colton Salik, and Ryan Hill, all contesting for this win right now. It belongs to any one of them. you got to drop back a lot further to find Alan Elwood leading a group of Judd Danielson, Dylan Jones, Ray Richer, Kevin Fetty, William Locklear, these boys are all back here racing for very important positions, trying to get themselves into the top 10. 
Look at Regan Jr. using a snip of a draft off of a lap car, and it's actually helping him out. That two-car magic is now back, and it's working for the 88 of Farnyars and the 46 of Regan Jr. Let's just see if they're able to try to take the lead. So far, they have been not have not been successful in doing it. And they are closing on William Locklear, who real quick uh, has a decision to make in the middle of the turn. He's going to need to get out of the way. I believe they're going to catch him here. Maybe they're going to get to the exit and be able to clear him on the super stretch with no problem. And it looks like it's going to be that way. They're going to get off the exit, and they're going to do it clean. Locklear's got nothing to worry about now. Oh, no. Oh, no. Tallarico is off. Boy, oh, he's in the wall. Oh, boy, we're in trouble. Oh, we're all right, but Tallarico had the worst end of it. Oh, man. He was having such a great run, too. That is an absolute shame. Tanner Tallarico here. That's the uh, the yellow and black car there. Kind of highlighter, highlighter yellow, the number one. And it looks like a little bit of contact may be made there from behind, and he's going to get tipped by the 99. Yeah, Colton Solik. Yeah, one of those scenarios where everybody's not really necessarily 100% lined up straight, and you just get bump drafting them quarter panels, man. It can just send you spin spinning. The same scenario what we seen with Danny Rogers earlier. And then there were four. Four up front battling for the lead. They'll come out of turn four with five to go. Salik, Stanford dropping off just a bit now. Salik in real trouble losing this pack. I'm trying to see if Salik picked up any damage on the front end. Very, very slight. Oh, no. He should be still good to catch these guys, but he's got no help. Payne going to the lead. Richard Regan going to be the odd man out. He's going to have to step back in the line in fourth. Tell you what, if Richard Regan Jr. can realistically get help from Colton Selleck, who's not too far behind, as well as William Locklear. Uh, if, I mean, if he can back up just a little bit and these three cats can just draft off each other, that might help uh, That might help Richard Regan Jr. I don't know. It's a little too far behind, though. Yeah, Selleck's in a bad spot right now. I'm going to be honest with you. He's got maybe Stanford a little bit too far behind him and, and uh, well, and getting away quickly. Uh, is Richard Regan. Regan even starting to lose a little bit of it here behind Farnyards. Three, uh, what was four is now kind of turned into three here a little bit. Andrew Payne leads him around. We knew Andrew Payne had a fast car coming in. He qualified third. Fast cars usually find their way back to the front. Andrew Payne has done it. Ryan Hill filling up the mirror in the Hill Coast Chevrolet. Oh, man. Well, the driver that probably has a heart-pounding moment right now as these laps close out is the race leader, Andrew Payne. I mean, you probably heard it said before in the past, Sean, you want to be in second place on the last lap or, some, or something along those lines. I don't know. Got two drivers behind them. They can freight train them. You just don't know what's going to happen. Coming down with three laps remaining in this race. Farnyar is right now. Uh, we're on board with him. He's sitting there in the popcorn position, looking, uh, looking, or maybe waiting for a missed opportunity by one of these two drivers. Awful tight line down there in the bottom. He closes in the bumper. Ryan Hill coming off the turn, and they're going to go to the outside. They're going to make a run. No, oh. Farnyar is going to stay on the bottom there with pain. Man, just think, oh. man, just think how how big of a heart jump that was for Andrew Payne. But Ryan Hill's like, man, I'm going to go for it. Ah, oh, you left me high and dry. Now I can't go for the race lead. And uh, you know what? All three of these drivers in it for the points. All they competing are. here in the Cup Series. Two laps to go here. Tanner, this has been one whale of a race tonight. The Bromonte 250 coming to a close here in two laps. Andrew Payne trying to hang on to this. Andrew Farnyard is trying to take it away. Problem is, I don't know, is Andrew Farnyard is going to get the big old run? Because I see Ryan Hill kind of falling back just a little bit in the closing stages of this race. Even though he's still keeping tabs, he's still kind of falling back just a little bit. Maybe trying to pick up Richard Maybe. Regan here. But do you have enough time? That's the thing, because you're going to be well, coming to the white flag this time by. I, 
you're going to need to drop back a little bit more to catch the, to ah, get region at your back. It is. It is. We're out of four now. Heading to the tri -oval. It'll be one to go. Ryan Hill may be looking to make a distant run here. He's definitely got the draft. He's got to continue to close. Oh, boy. If he times oh. this right, he's got it. These two are going to war up in front of him. Remember, you got the Alabama gang back straight away to worry about there, Andrew. <laughs> Nothing is safe. Nothing is safe as we head down the super stretch. Ryan Hill still closing the gap. Ah, oh, man, he's there. Ryan Hill closed the gap now, man. Who's he going to help? And he plays this right. There could be three wide going across the line. We're going to have a close finish here, Tanner. They're side by side. It turns three and four. Here we go. Contact. The final lap of the Pro Amp 250. Payne is loose. Farnyard is trying to hang on. Here's Ryan Hill trying to go three wide. Payne is blocking. Hill makes contact with Farnyard. They're making more contact. Farnyard is loose. Hill is in the second. Farnyard is all over the place. And Andrew Payne is going to win the race with Ryan Hill. And Andrew Farnyard is finishing third. Richard Reagan Whoa, Jr. What a finish. Fourth, what a finish. Ryan Hill actually helped determine to finish that race, even though Ryan was doing everything he can to try to give himself a victory. We're going to watch the replay of this here as they came out of four. You see the battle, the contact there between Hill and Farnyards, and then he goes at it again. And Hill just comes through like the bull in the china shop and takes it away from Farnyards, put a stick in his side and let him know he was there and moved him out of the way. That contact helped out, helped out Andrew Payne and got him that victory, too, because Hill was all over that bat bumper of Andrew Payne. Well done by all three drivers. Really was. And, uh, well, um, some, well, people may not be exchanging Christmas gifts this year now because of that ending, but uh, while we sort that all out, we are going to step away from home and take a break. We'll come back. We'll give you the full results of this race. We'll talk to a few drivers about this exciting race. And we'll do that all after just a few moments away here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. We'll be right back. You are watching the Global Sim Racing Channel and you have just seen the Romanti 250 here from Talladega Super Speedway. And listen, if you're just tuning in, first, I want you to hit the subscribe button. Second, go back and watch the replay. You can just rewind it back to the beginning. Watch it from the beginning. <laughs> this is a good one tonight. That's all Andrew Payne. 
take home a big victory here in Alabama. And Andrew Payne, uh, boy, I'll tell you what, that was a great run for him. He had a fast car all night. He did start third in this race. Ryan Hill electing to start at the back of the field, not qualify. He gets a second place finish up 23 spots tonight. Andrew Farnyars, the big loser there at the end, getting bumped out of the way, uh, shoved out of the way, maybe even by Ryan Hill. He'll finish third. Richard Riggin Jr. with a fourth place finish. Colton Salick with a really solid run tonight. Maybe comes up just a little bit short there at the end, but he does take home the top five. Eric Stanford, sixth, seventh for David Washington. Alan Elwood in eighth. Judd Danielson survives and finishes ninth. And Ray Richard is going to round out the top 10 tanner. Yeah, Dylan Jones is going to finish in the 11th position tonight. Not too much effect for Dylan, but that's very unfortunate. He'll finish 11th. Kevin Fetty started from the back of the pad, gets a 12th place finish, and on the lead lap, I'd say that's a solid day. William Locklear, the first car one lap down, finishes in 13th. Tanner Tellerico was doing great all race long, got himself up towards the top five, but unfortunately a spin on the back straightaway, he'll have to end up 14th. Ethan Moore was very strong, but unfortunately he was a lap down, he'll finish in 15th. Gerald Campbell in 16th. Kyle Cameron will finish in the 17th spot tonight. Jay Queen in 18th. Mark Lewell, 19th, and rounding off the top 20, Sean, is Mark McFadden. Okay, and there we go. That's your top 20. Let's get the rest. Adam Eisenhower will finish 21st tonight. Danny Rogers, the 22 in 22nd. And 23rd is going to be Gary Sexton. It did not work out for him tonight the way he wanted, unfortunately. Justin Bolton, 24th. Daniel Jackson, 25th. Jeremy Crandall, a 26th place run. Will Davis, 27th for him. Josh Bonwell, well, that was 28th. And Daniel Eberhardt is uh, going to finish in 29th. He did not start this race, folks. So, uh, and neither, I don't think Bonwell actually got started either. So, no uh, no victory cake for them. But you know who is having victory cake this evening? Or maybe even victory champagne. That's going to be the winner of our race, Andrew Payne. And we've caught up with him down in victory lane. Andrew, congratulations for your big win in the Bromonti 250 tonight. Thanks. That was uh, quite the uh, stressful final few laps there. Yeah, it was. Why don't you talk us through it a little bit? What did uh, what what were you seeing? Um, I was seeing a lot of people trying to make moves on the high side, and some of them uh, almost worked, but most of them didn't. And it was just a lot of uh, sticking to the low lane, which helped a lot. And then we got broken up. The top, I think it was seven of us, got broken up into three, and then from there it was just. Whoever could get a better push off the cor- off a of four coming to the uh, start finish line. Well, you know, I made the comment early on in this race. You were actually, uh, I thought you were giving a lot of guys help. You seem to be pushing other drivers up through the field really, really well early on. You seem to be everyone's best partner. But uh, sometime around late in that second stage, you you made it known that you weren't much interested in doing that anymore. Yeah, points were on the line tonight. I needed this uh, win to advance. So the first couple stages, I uh, was trying to keep calm. And then once the last stage came about, I was going full force trying to get to the front. Well, the name of the game is win and you're in. You have won. You're in and you make it to Kansas in a couple of weeks. Uh, What's the goal when you get to Kansas? Much different track. Uh, uh, Still a a D-shaped oval, but... uh, Certainly got to uh, fight that track a little bit differently than you do Talladega, don't you? Yeah, the goal for that race is just to not have the first round of the the first race, the second round, and like the first race of the first round wrecked out, trying to go out for the uh, win this time by and get as many points as we can, trying to make it to the final four. Well, and getting to the final four is what we wish you best for, Andrew. Congratulations on your big win tonight. Uh, who would you like to thank before we let you go? I'd like to thank my grandparents and my parents, uh, my crew chief who passed away a year and a half ago. This one is dedicated to him. And a big thanks to Colton Salick and Tanner Tellerico for pushing me. Yeah, and uh, boy, they were a big factor in tonight's race as well. Uh, very sorry to hear about your uh, your crew chief. But uh, again, uh, we're, we're glad you, you got the victory tonight and certainly nice of you to dedicate it to him. Andrew, we'll see you in a couple of weeks, my friend. Thank you. All right, guys, that was our winner, Andrew Payne. And, well, I believe Tanner has caught up with Ryan Hill, driver of the Hillco Chevrolet and our second-place finisher tonight. Tanner, you've got him. 
I have Ryan Hill and Ryan, man, you were uh, you were up towards the front where when you needed to be the most. But unfortunately, it's not a victory here tonight. But hey, I tip my hat to you. At times, you had to be aggressive when you really needed to. Talk to me about your race, bud. Yeah, uh, we started off in the back, just trying to ride a little bit, see how the race played out to us. Uh, we kind of the first stage, you know, I wasn't exactly planning to be ten seconds off the back, but you know, it all worked out in the end. Uh, then we had the big wreck on the second stage restart, which I'm still surprised I got through that unscathed. Uh, and then other than that, it was just, you know, we were up front and it was just, we were committed to stay up there. Yeah, you most certainly were. And at times it looked like you were most committed to the outside row. Uh, you had some unfamiliar guys that were drafting who were a lap down that you're using picks to try to get towards the front, which actually worked out in your favor. Uh, Talk to me about the just draft package. Uh, is there a noticeable difference in these cup cars as far as drafting? Uh, I know it hasn't been very good in the past, but is there any kind of improvement or relatively the same? It's a little bit the same, to be honest with you. I mean, I'm the only one running an SS, so I doubt. I don't know if that has any difference or not. But, uh, I mean, earlier in the race, I was up on the outside by myself making positions, so maybe the SS is faster on restricted place. So I don't know. It was, uh, but it was interesting. Uh, the drafting, like the suck up portion is a lot better than what it used to be. You can get a lot more runs. You can time your runs better, but it's been better now than what it has been the last couple of years. So I applaud iRacing for at least taking the direction of fixing it. Yeah, absolutely. And we have seen some great racing up towards the front, three wide, sometimes four wide scenarios, but nonetheless, we closed the books on Talladega, which was an unknown fact, uh, uh, unknown, a lot of unknowns entering this race. Now we go to a track that's a little known, and that's Kansas Speedway on September 27th. How do you feel about your chances of trying to get back to victory lane since you already have two wins this season at Kansas Speedway? I, I, I really do like Kansas, unfortunately. I think you're going to have to watch out for the 88 car, the 98 car. So, you know, the whole Aegis guys, you're going to have to watch out for them because they're quick on the mile and a half. Uh, I'm hoping to be able to run up there. Uh, Kansas is kind of a hit or miss for me. Sometimes I'll run really good there. Sometimes I'll run. I don't even know why I showed up that day. So I'm hoping it's still one of those days where we can come across at least, at least a top three. Cause you know, consistency is key. We finished, I think a third and then two seconds in a row. So I'm confident we're going in there with Kansas with the sh shot to still win the championship. It's just you know, we got to be consistent. Hopefully that we can come away with a W and some other guys that we're worried about can uh, kind of have some bad luck. All right, Ryan. Well, great job on, on racing here at Talladega today. Even though it was, it, it, at times it can be a little bit of a doozy, but you successfully su survived Dega. Best of luck at Kansas Speedway. We hope to see you in victory lane soon. All right. Thank you. That was Ryan Hill who finishes in second place tonight. Sean, uh, actually, no, excuse me, Nick, I believe yeah. you caught up with uh, a driver. Yeah, I've caught up with uh, Richard Regan Jr. down here. Really solid uh, top four finish tonight. Uh, Richard, crazy race out there for everyone tonight. Take me through that last stage. Uh, you were sitting there, uh, lost the draft a little bit, but uh, you know, with those three up front making contact, what was like? What was that? Uh, watching that from? Uh, yeah, I uh, didn't plan on losing the draft there at the end kind of sucked but uh i just was hoping that they were going to wreck each other honestly and i could be able to get a run from them stalling out but it didn't work out um i'm 95 percent sure i made it to the next round i really had to finish good today get a good point stay won the first stage got second in the second one and fell a little short on the on the finish yeah i believe you uh did make the next round uh what's this uh confidence level for you and uh, your team headed into kansas uh the confidence Confidence is there. I had a bad race at Indy, but the past two races have been good finishes. Um, I've been doing a lot of practice today with uh, Jesse. Sadly, he wasn't able to make it. I only had one teammate out there, Gerald, on, in the six. So once he got shuffled back from his miscues, it, it really hurt me a lot because I didn't have anyone else to work out uh, to work with. Yeah, well, it looks like you're still looking for your uh, first season, uh, win on the season. Uh, I'm sure you'd love to get that at Kansas. Yeah, I'd like to get it before the my rookie season's up. Um, I'd like to make it to the Final Four because I was third or fourth in points the whole season. So that's my goal is to make it to the Final Four, and we'll we'll see what happens from there. Yeah, I'm sure if uh, you make it to Homestead, you, you're going to be a contender for sure. It seems like every time I uh, come in here to watch one of these races, I always see you up front somewhere. 
Uh, anyone you want to give a shout out or thank you to before you let, we let you go tonight? Uh, first and foremost, I like to thank my spotter Corey Smith. He did an awesome job tonight, giving me a lot of feedback. Gerald Campbell in the sixth couldn't do anything without him. Neonism Game Art, uh, Folds of Honor, for, First Ford, First Auto Group, LSR TV, Multiple Sclerosis Society, uh, Sim Racing Apps, Blue Shock Optics, and my mom for watching, my aunt for watching. All right. Well, your spotter definitely for sure did a great job tonight getting you up there into that uh, fourth place finishing position. Uh, great to see you out there tonight. Uh, hope to see you up front again next week. All right. Thank you, guys. All right, and uh, I think that completes the interview segment uh, of our show this evening. I, listen, uh, a great race, Tanner. Nick, uh, any closing thoughts? Um, yeah, Talladega has always been a fun race to watch and to call, especially when you got a bunch of cars in a big group of pack, and you just don't know what's going to happen, man. I've been, I, I've ran out of fuel on the last lap on play tracks before, so I, I totally know how it goes for a driver on a disappointing finish, but. You know, you got to move on to the next week, and it's always been a pleasure broadcast, you know, commentating for this uh, series. It's been fun to watch, especially stage racing. Actually, this is like the only stage league that I know that does stage racing, so it's been pretty cool to watch. Well, you just got a bunch of people upset who say, hey, I race in a stage racing league, but hey, we'll take more of them here on the Global <laughs> Sim Racing Channel. Just get in touch. Uh, Nick, thank you so much down there on the pit lane tonight. A lot of action you saw, and... Uh, Nice to, to get a little flavor into the broadcast here with a third wheel. So uh, good to you. But hey, listen, I want to thank Bromonte Landscape and Design for uh, bringing this race to you tonight. The Bromonte 250 here from Talladega Super Speedway. Listen, from idyllic outdoor living spaces with terrace gardens to tranquil waterfalls and magical children's play areas to gated stone entryways and magnificent pool houses. Remember, Bromonte Landscape Design and Management Group delivers a dreamlike uh, experience for you amenities landscape designs to long island's most prestigious homes and estates with meticulous attention and detail to premium quality craftsmanship the bramani team transforms properties into breathtaking home landscapes as unique as the families who live there find them at their website bromonti.com we also want to thank ad pro 360 they're our title sponsor of course Ad Pro 360, an advertising agency specializing in digital and social media marketing. For more information, go to adproresults.com. And of course, we want to thank the Simulated Stock Car Association to everyone at the Simulated Stock Car Association for organizing the Ad Pro 360 Cup Series and contracting with GSRC to broadcast. On the screen now are just some of the company's equipment and software that made this broadcast uh, possible and makes our show go. The iconic original music that lets your ears alert your eyes. You're watching a GSRC production. Comes courtesy of Eric Eckholm and June Lalonde. See the screen for how to contact each of them. There's a link in the description to Eric Eckholm's music here on YouTube if you want to check it out. Remember, the SSCA Cup Series returns in two weeks. That's two weeks from tonight, September 27th. For race number one in round two of the playoffs from Kansas Motor Speedway. We will see you in the fall as uh, summer ends on September 22nd. GSRC will be there to bring you all the action. We hope you join us then. Sliding across your screen now are some upcoming broadcasts, so check those out. Mark them down on your calendar. Hit that subscribe button before you get out of here tonight. Please give us a sub. If you'd like more information about GSRC, including a complete list of future broadcasts, check out our website, globalsimracingchannel.com. We're also on Twitter, at GSR Channel, and Facebook. Uh, type in Global Sim Racing Channel. And uh, let's see. I guess finally, on behalf of the crew, we've got a big crew in tonight. I want to thank uh, my partner, Tanner Sharp. I want to thank Nick Schmeg down there in the pits taking care of us. And Stefan Schlocker for doing an awesome job spotting for us this evening. But uh, we'd like to thank all of you most for watching. Oh, I forgot to thank Joe Peak and Dougie Beard can't forget them they're the most important part of the broadcast so until next time race clean race hard and we'll see you a couple weeks in kansas <laughs>